Nobody's armed? Nobody's armed. You sure? In the shades of human experience, moments of darkness and tragedy often intersect with the light of justice and resolution. During the chaos and turmoil, these incidents serve as reminders of the indomitable spirit of those who seek truth and justice in the face of adversity. Did you subsequently enter them into evidence at the Green Bay Police Department? From an ex-lover who dismembered her past boyfriend to a daycare woman who unintentionally killed a child. Right now you're being arrested for child endangering. Um, at a felony level. These incidents explored the ultimate cruelty of humanity. Death scene or homicide scene investigations prior to uh, this particular situation. The incident revolved around a 25 years old woman named Taylor Shabuznes. On the 23rd of February, 2022, in Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin, the woman was convicted of killing and dismembering a former boyfriend and scattering his body parts at various locations. Hence, the investigators searched outside her van and here's what happened next. Upon reaching the location and checking the van, the police were dumbfounded. Soon they made a decisive decision and Taylor found herself in a very problematic situation. Is this blood? Does this look like blood to you? Or am I just tripping? Bloody footprint? You see this right here? Could possibly be blood. Hmm. Hey, who did that? Hi. Hi, Taylor. How's it going? Officer Russell with the Green Bay Police Department. Just make sure you ain't got nothing on you here. With Taylor. Contact with Taylor. Taylor, you have one more for your arrest. Just put your hands behind your back, please. Anybody else in your apartment? You got blood on your hands here, too. No, on your hands. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to. What apartment is here? What apartment are you in? Do you have Adam Green come up? He's got some here, get out here. On the double. Which apartment? One, one that is the one they came back to. Go in here. Go in here. Come to the back of the apartment. That's where we're at. You come over here. Two more will be fine. If uh, 84 is here. In the solemn chambers of the court, the prosecutor's discourse delved into her transgressions, unveiling the contours of the harrowing tale. The whole brutal incident came to light steadily. Did she feel guilt about her butchery? Exhibit, actually the entirety of that exhibit was played into the record. Uh, officer, um, having reviewed that uh, video, do you recognize uh, the video that was depicted? Yes. Is that consistent with the uh, 
uh, body camera worn footage that uh, you were wearing on February 23rd? Yes. Uh, I'd move Exhibit 81. Any objection? No. Oh. <clears throat> Received. Um, so I want to ask just a few questions then, Officer. Um, There's an earlier part in the clip where uh, you had noted some area of suspected uh, blood. Is that right? That's right. And, and what do you recall observing? It looked like a, a couple of drops of blood in front of the vehicle along with a footprint that was within or that encompassed one of the drops. And I guess was that pointed out to other officers who uh, were on scene? Yes. Um, you mentioned then uh, the, the lights of the vehicle were, were activated and sort of flash, is that right? Yes. And then about 10 seconds later, Mr. Business exited the apartment? Yes. Um, at the end of the video, you're, uh, where were you walking uh, Mr. Business to? I was uh, walking her to my patrol car. And um, was she, I guess, put in the, the back of the squad car? Yes, she was. Was there any like, further questioning or anything done at that point? The only question I asked Ms. Business was if she knew why we were there. Okay. And, and then um, did you ultimately just transport her then to the uh, Green Bay Police Department? Yes. Uh, when uh, you got to the Green Bay Police Department, uh, what further steps did you take? Uh, we placed her in interview room three, I believe, where I had Officer Kenny assist me with taking photographs of what looked like smeared blood on her hands and on her clothing. I also had her remove some, or the sweatshirt that I that had what appeared to be blood on it, as well as her socks and her shoes. Um, and then uh, was another officer requested to assist with the uh, further removal of some clothing? I believe after I left the room, there was another officer that might, might have been asked to assist with the removal of some additional clothing so that Ms. Shabizis could get uh, temporary clothing because we wanted all her clothes as evidence. Uh, the, the clothing items that, that you took, um, did those um, stay within your custody and control? Yes. Uh, and did you subsequently enter them into evidence at the Green Bay Police Department? I did. Uh, I guess in totality on, on February 23rd, in your interactions with um, Mr. Business, um, did you ask sometimes some questions of her? I didn't ask questions of her. I more like commands like, hey, please remove you, your uh, jacket, please remove your hat, uh, let me get your shoes, sit here, just commands, not really questions. Uh, the, uh, the commands that uh, your request that you were giving Mr. Business, um, was she in that time following those? Yes, she was. Was she? in some instances responding appropriately? Yes, she was. In, in the context of your questions and commands? Yes, she was. For instance, uh, did you ask you know, if there was anyone else in the residence at that point? I did ask did, her. Did she provide a response? She did. Uh, and was there a person located in the apartment? Yes, there was. Thank you, officer. I have nothing further. Cross-examination, Mr. Frelick. Thank you. Officer Russell, <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Um, so you were um, asked to go directly to 2320, excuse me, 2353 Eastman Avenue on February 23rd of 2022, correct? Yes. Who, who asked you to go over there? I was dispatcher, and Sergeant Brester also instructed me to go there. Sergeant Brester? Yes. Okay. Did you go by yourself? Several other officers were sent to uh, the location. And what was the purpose of you going over there? The purpose of me going over there was to relieve deputies that were on scene, along with assist with the uh, overall incident. Were you going over there to look at a vehicle or talk to people or what, do you know? I was tasked, me and other officers were tasked with locating a person who was last seen with the victim as well as looking at the vehicle as I described earlier. Okay. So you were asked to go and see if you could make contact with Taylor Chavizas? Correct. <clears throat> Have you been involved in... Uh, death scene or homicide scene investigations prior to uh, this particular situation? Yes. 
A jury convicted Taylor in July of first-degree intentional homicide, third-degree sexual assault, and mutilating a corpse. She was sentenced to life in prison without parole. While Taylor literally fragmented her ex-boyfriend, our next individual was careless even in the death of his mother. But before that, let's see somebody whose careless behavior resulted in a child's demise. Um, you're going to be taken to the Fairborn Police Department. The incident is centered around a 25 years old woman named Rabia Nadiraba Mubalai. On the 8th of January, 2024 in Fairborn, Greene County, Ohio, the police found a three-year-old seemingly clinging to life, with her mother nowhere in sight. Moments after the child was taken away by police for medical attention, they finally made contact with her mother outside the Fairborn home. Here's what happened next. The officers reached the location, and after a brief search, found the kid in a condition that left them in a state of awe. Subsequently, law enforcement encountered the mother. What was their reaction after noticing her? Fairborn Police! I'll go. She's still breathing. Get a light. Two ninety-five. All right. Excuse me. Call code enforcement. Have them respond, please. Um, you're going to be taken to the Fairborn Police Department. Uh, there's some some administrative things that we have to do there. Uh, take a, a picture and some some fingerprints. But I'm going to be down to talk to you uh, soon. Okay. All right. Um, we'll work through it. So I, I can't I can't give you an answer like that only because I don't know. Um, but the authorities weren't deprived of humanity and showed tenderness. They also briefed Mubalai about the course of action and updated her on her daughter's current condition. Her repercussions were noteworthy. There we go. Alright, just uh just like it. Oops. Um, I do not. Um, right now, you're being arrested for child endangering um, at a felony level. Okay. At a felony level. Yes. Um, we um, are still we, we're doing our thing that we have to do. Okay. Uh, as Detective Whitaker mentioned, he will be in to speak with you. Uh, right now, we're going to go to our jail in Fairborn and uh, process on those charges, and then um, go from there. And as we go through these this process, I'll try to answer any questions I can best of my ability, okay? All right? Yeah? We'll try to, uh, yeah. Rabia Nadhira Mubalai was charged with endangering a child and felonious assault. As mentioned before, now we will see someone who didn't even bother to report his mother's death. I'm just gonna read you Miranda so you know your rights before anything happens, okay? All right. The incident revolved around a 36 years old man named Justin Carver. On the 5th of May, 2023 in Punta Gorda, Florida, a man was confronted by police after they heard that a woman was missing in her home during a wellness check. Soon after, 
law enforcement didn't hesitate to launch a full-fledged investigation. The authorities checked around the house and talked with the neighbors. The answers from them raised the bar of dubiousness. Soon after, they also visited the hospital and tried to contact the woman over the phone. What revelations, if any, awaited their patient pursuit? Did it smell when you went to the door? Yeah, there's a door on the right on the opposite side. Did you see somebody? The other side of Reed's bed. Hello? Sheriff's office. Hello? Saying I'll bring you back or whatever. That's just a... The other door smells like a seven. You smell it? No, I do. I don't know what's coming out of there. You just ask the neighbors, I guess, if they see anybody. Is that Reese right there, right? A little bit. Watch right there. Yeah, I saw him. Let's go to the neighbor. The one next to us over here. See if they see anybody over here in a minute. Have you seen Lainey recently? The girl? Yeah, next door neighbor. Just the guys over there. When's the last time you've seen them? Him, he usually walks up and down the road, but her, I haven't seen her in a while. How long would a while be? Mm. Days, months? Day or two. A couple three. days. Three? Three? Yeah. Three years or something like that. When's the last time you've seen the boys? Yesterday. Okay, so nobody today. Mm-mm. Have you heard any... Any fighting, anything in the last two days? Any it's loud commotion? Mm -hmm. I know it would be not abnormal for you to hear yelling and screaming coming from over there. So. No. Nothing. No, I, We're kind of new to the neighborhood too. So yeah. Oh, okay. There's been a lot different things going on here, <laughs> so it's weird. <laughs> We're not used to it. <laughs> no. More, more quiet. Yeah. yeah. They used to live right down there but behind the Circle K in Cleveland, Dalewood. Yeah. Oh, yep. nice and man, it's so cool back there. You don't worry about nothing. You know what I mean? It's nice and quiet. I know all the neighbors tell 50 years, boy. And they come up here and okay, this is just way different for me, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. All right. That's all that matters, that you guys are doing good. Yeah. Well, so yeah. if we hear and or see yeah. anything? Just call the number right there. That's the non-emergency number. If you see Lainey or any yeah, other her boys. sister's looking for her and she's not able to get a hold of her, so that's why we're out trying to make contact with her. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, he's only been there for like a few weeks because the tent wasn't there, and the tent showed up and the was around. So. Right. Any any commotions or anything in the last couple of days no, or before like then? No, yelling or fighting or anything like that. that Nothing here. They're pretty quiet for the most part. But okay. The most I see out of the dude is just like sometimes he walks up and down the road. Today he was riding a bike. Um, do you know what color bike it was? I didn't pay attention. Okay. Was it just a bike or a yeah, tricycle? Like a, just like a full size like bike. bike okay. Alrighty. But I can smell that smell. You got close to the... Yeah. The AC is working.
That gets the push in. Yeah, we're not gonna push this It ain't supposed to be pushed in. I mean, I can make an open door. <laughs> There's a door on each side of the house. Missouri. What do you see, Jose? No. Nothing. The kitchen's over there. So, but I can't. The officer returned to the house again, and finally, they found Justin. The cops shared the concern and questioned him. Nonetheless, his answers were uncouth, and it was evident he was trying to hide something. What enigmatic shadows danced within his heart, guiding his unsettling demeanor? Oh, I'm just... Did you hear us knocking before no. where you knocked out? No, I was sleeping in there. I'm glad you woke up because you're about to come inside. We're looking for mom. Do you Have you seen her? She's not around right now. Do you know where she's at? Sister's asking for her. She's not in any trouble or anything like that. When was the last time you saw her? A few days ago. Where'd she go? She just went to the store and said she'd be back in a little while. Is it abnormal for mom to be gone for? Days at a time. Sometimes. Where does she usually go? Does she have a favorite place where she likes to go when she's not home? Not that I know of. Does she tell you anything out of the normal no. when she last time you saw her? No. What happened the last time you guys were together? She gave me a few cigarettes and a little bit of food and some hand soap washed my hands and told me I could come home. Stay back here. Okay. But you haven't seen mom since then. When's the last time you text called her or anything like I that? Okay. When was the last time you saw dad? A week ago. Do you know where he's staying at? No. I heard that she might have called the cops on him. Yeah, he, he got arrested the 25th of last month. <laughs> For trespassing. Do you know who stays in the tent? Well, that's what I was saying before she told me I'm coming to the Oh, she told you you could come before she left? Yeah. Would it be alright if they just went inside to make sure she's not in there? It's not my house. Huh? I can't tell you no. Okay. But you stay here and it's your mom's house? Yes, and we're looking for mom, so we just want to make sure mom's not stowed away in a closet or something. Dad didn't come back and retaliate for getting arrested or something like that. So, if you're not going to tell me yes or no, then we're just going to peek her head in there real quick and then we'll come back outside. You can lead the way if you're so pleased. Oh, I'll try to lock the door. You could go in with You could go in. Just lead us through. Yeah. Uh, 
Do you have a key? No. Why would you lock the door behind you? I just usually do that. So how do you get in? I don't know. How about this other little door that's over here? It's, uh, it's just barricaded up. With what? Uh, garbage can and some stuff. So how do you get in the house when you lock the door? Because I feel like you're f***ing with me. What the hell? I'm What's the deal? I'm do you understand how how this looks, right? Yes, sir. So why? So how do you get in the house since you locked the door? I'm gonna probably sleep in the tent. Or... Are you not supposed to be in the house? Is that why uh, you locked the door? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. All right, that's fine. We're not worried about that. We just want to make sure. Right now, it's fine and mom. That's it. If you know you're not supposed to be here, that's on whatever. We can deal with that at a later point in time. I really don't care about that. Yeah. My main goal is making sure mom's okay, find mom, and do that. That's, that's what we're here for. We're not here for you because yeah. you were sleeping in the bed or whatever. So. Okay. So, obviously, you went in and unlocked it from the inside. Did you get in? Do you just push that one thing open to get in? Do right. yeah, you mind doing that for us right now? Law enforcement went into a concealed room with Justin, and the outcome literally put them in sheer disbelief. Hence, they took a little time to act according to the law. During questioning, Justin's revelations unfurled like shadows in the dusk, leaving the officers ensnared in a web of unsettling truths that pierced the veil of certainty. So push it into the right. Keep pushing it in. Now try to move it out, and then push it out. There you go. So are you sure mom's not in there? I don't know. I just stayed in my room, stayed in my living room. We're already in, so we're gonna find out, so. I understand, right? You're gonna tell me you didn't know mom was in there? No, sir. Stand up for me, take my back, so. Cause now they got a whole bigger issue. Call 400 and have me come out here. 431 to 400. Four seventeen four hundred. I'm gonna need you to come out here. I'm just gonna be a big issue. Just gonna read your Miranda so you know your rights before anything happens. Okay. All right. So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used you in court. Do you understand that so far? So, you have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and have him or her present during questioning. If you can't afford one, one will be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. Do you understand that so far? All right. So, if you decide to answer any questions without a lawyer present, you still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Do you understand that? So, after being re read these rights, do you still wish to talk to us? Okay, we're not going to ask you any questions at this point in time, but... Just in case. Yeah. Do you swear to affirm that the statement you're about to give is the whole truth but nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. When we first got here and talked to you, you said you hadn't seen mom in how long? A few days. A few days. When is is that the actual actual answer or what's what is the answer you wanna Swear to the last time you saw mom. We were talking around the house here. I mean, you know, I seen her riding a bike and uh, she gave me a few cigarettes and stuff and told me to stop back by the house later. And I came and stopped back by the house later and we were talking and cleaning up the yard and cleaning up the house and everything. And she told me to stay inside and that was a few days ago. But you said that wasn't the truth, that you weren't supposed to be staying inside. No. Yes, when we talked to you over there, you, okay. I said you're not supposed to be here. That's so. No contact order. Okay. 
I believe. Do you know if it's still active or no? No, sir. Okay. I imagine it might. I don't know for sure. I figured she told me I could come and stay with her. And I don't know. Okay. What is there no contact order between you and mom for? We got into the dispute. Um, she said I slapped her, I punched her. So battery? Yes, sir. Okay, That's domestic it. stuff. Yes, sir. When's the last time you've seen dad? This last week, I believe. Okay. What did? You, how did your conversation with dad go the last time you saw him? Bad. Bad? It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad? How about between mom and dad? Did they talk? Um, the only thing I knew is she told, at that point in time when she got home, she told me and him both to leave, so I left and went walking somewhere and we stayed away. Do you know where dad is at currently? No, sir. Do you know if dad has a job? No, sir. And you haven't talked to dad since? That night, yes, sir. That night? Okay. When I guess he got arrested? That's what I heard. And you left, so you, you didn't get arrested? Yes, sir. Okay. And then your and mom's relationship has been good as of as of late. Yeah. Did you notice anything different while you've been staying here? here? Seven zero zero seventy Home Boulevard. Seven zero zero seventy Home Boulevard. Process Telecast. Make contact with complaint reference. Did that not raise any alarm to you? Did you go and check? I mean, I did kind of look in there. So you saw her in the position that she's currently in now. Yes, sir. So why did you tell us that mom wasn't there? Uh, hey. yes, mom, you know better than me. I wasn't the one that did it. So. Yes, sir. I smelt her before you ever even came outside, and you're telling me mom's not in there, and you know. Damn well that she was in there. Yes, sir. And they were lying to me. So why wouldn't you just tell us the truth? We told you from the beginning we weren't there for you. We just wanted to make sure mom and mom was good. Yeah. That's all. So what prompted you to lie to us? Sorry. And you, um, when you went in there and checked on her two days ago, did you know that she was deceased? I couldn't say so. I wouldn't say no. Okay, but it was it? Apparently yeah. obvious to you that yes, somebody smelling like that wouldn't be yes, somebody sir. who wouldn't. Okay. Yes, so why didn't you call law enforcement when you found her deceased? You don't know. Okay. Any idea why she is deceased? No, sir. What could have happened? No, sir. Okay. I really don't. I got you. Well, I will conclude our portion of. Justin Carver was arrested and charged with failing to report a death to medical examiner. While Carver didn't report his mother's death and tried to hide this matter, the next individual took it one step further when she took the life of his own child. He has autism. Yeah. Like a high functioning. Yeah. <laughs> the incident is centered around a 42 years old woman named Shonda Vander Ark. On the 6th of July, 2022, in Norton Shores, Muscogan County, Michigan, the authorities received a call to assist with a medical emergency. Upon reaching the scene, officers encountered Shanda Vanderark, who reported that her teenage son was unresponsive. Subsequently, the police department took the next course of action. The police officers reached the spot. Shanda started to talk to the police regarding the state of her 15 years old son, Timothy. Did their interaction yield any pivotal insights into the enigmatic circumstances surrounding his demise? I'm Officer Stefanich. <laughs> Right now we got some people coming over to talk to you, okay? You have another son inside the house? I have two. Yeah. Are they sleeping still right now? One of them is, yeah. The uh -oh. 20-year-old's awake. He's 20? No, the 20-year-old's awake. Okay. He's, he's, been, he's been wearing really loose clothes the last couple of weeks. He's and really just, skinny. He's really skinny, and I didn't notice till this morning because he wouldn't, like, I asked him if he's okay, and he would not answer me. Like, he's 15. He's been... He, he's, he has autism? Yeah. Like a high-functioning? Yeah. <laughs> I 
I just I had no clue how bad it was. Oh my god. Like I said, he did, he did this back in uh, my husband's stroke with January 3rd. Mm -hmm. So he did this back in, I don't know, second week of January for almost three weeks. And then he finally he ate um, he ate something last night. I can't remember what it was now, I'm sorry. No. It's okay. Where's yeah. your where's your husband now? He's down at his parents' house because he can't get in our house because this room. He can't get up the stairs. Oh. And nobody's answering the phone at their house. Oh. Um, you can go back in the house if you want, but I can't. I gotta keep the the basement secure. You can't go down there, okay? I get it. I just. I just I had no idea. I would have taken him in or something. Oh. Now you said the last time you saw him was 5.30 this morning? Yeah. Did he say anything? He had fallen out of bed. At 5.30? Yeah. You sure it wasn't <laughs> earlier? I mean, it's possible. I thought it was 5.30, but I wasn't super awake. I heard a thump, and I came down, and he's kind of laying on his side, kind of like, what the heck? And um, and I picked, I, uh, I, yeah, I reached out and he, he, I'm sorry. That's all right. Sorry. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, yeah. And I reached out and he pulled himself up and I asked him if he's okay. And I just asked if he hit his head. He said, no, I think I hit my, my, my knees on my chest. I think he couldn't, obviously he couldn't tell me how he fell. Um, Oh my god! No! I don't know what to do! Oh my god! He said it was okay. And then. Do you have other family here in town? Well, it was solid, but they're not answering. Yeah. My, my father in law's an attorney. Best thing to do is surround yourself with family. Uh, Help you get. Because, uh, you know, right now you're going through it by yourself and you. <laughs> you, you get overwhelmed. I have no idea! How could I have missed that? Mm. He's, he's been wearing baggy. I mean, he's wearing a hoodie for crying out loud. And I just didn't. His face didn't look like that. What the heck? Now, what's your first name, ma'am? Shonda, S H A N D A. And what's your what's your last name? Is it Ferguson also? No, it's Vander Ark. V A N D E R space capital A R K. What's no, your... that's why I made. That's why I. I asked him to eat last night because his face started looking a little thin. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. enough. And he wouldn't show. I'm like, let me see. Hold your shirt up. And he wouldn't hold his shirt up. He wouldn't do anything. Did he get real skinny last time too? Yes. The only reason I know is because my uh, my seven-year-old walked in on him accidentally when he was in the shower downstairs. Uh -huh. And then my seven-year-old comes up and he's like, Mama, Timothy's really skinny. I was like, oh. Was that this time or last time? That was last time. That was like first week of February is when DC discovered that. Mm -hmm. And I told him he was either gonna start eating every multiple times a day or I was taking him to the hospital and he didn't want to go to the hospital, so. He was... So he ended up eating on his own? Yes. Okay. And then, so this this last time, was yeah. it because your husband's in the, wasn't home? Well, he hasn't been home since January 3rd, but okay. he had, a, um, he had a, a grand mal seizure. God, it's been three weeks ago now, if, right? Right after that, he was, he actually mentioned he was hungry the day his stepdad, or his dad, his stepmom called to tell us they were divorced and moving to Florida last week. Where do they live? They, they lived in Oklahoma, but they moved to outside of Jacksonville, Florida, and they're not answering their phone either. Okay. And that's his biological father? Yeah. Yeah. He moved up here with us last May because his dad couldn't handle him. And he's been great. I mean... Last Other May, like, as in strikes. May of last year or this yeah, year? Yeah, May of last year. Okay. May of last year. And he goes to school and everything he was? I've been homeschooling him online um, because it's high functioning. Um, it's, he's just done better at it. I can show you his grade report online. I've got all the... It's online. Okay. Is he doing okay? Yeah, he was... I mean, he was failing math, which is not unusual, but he was passing everything else. What's his date of birth? It was 8 6 of 2006. I should have, he just, I tried to check in the last few days and he just wouldn't let me 
anywhere near him. He didn't want a kiss, a hug, nothing. <sighs> Probably didn't want you to give him a hug because then you could he, tell he, that I he was... I would have known. Uh, and like I, he, I told him he was stumbling a little bit last night, but he's not the most coordinated kid in the world. And he said it was okay. And then he ate. <sighs> what was the last time he ate, you think? Last night. No. Gabriel, keep him up there. Um, he ate... He ate toast. Um, there's two. There's a seven-year-old and a 20-year-old. The seven-year-old was asleep. I guess he's not now. Oh, my God. I just made him eat. Mm. I just, I just, no. I feel like such a failure. You, you see there's food in the house. Oh where where was where does he sleep at? Oh, right there in that room. That, that loft bed. Okay, so notice there's another loft bed in another room. Yeah, that's room. my seven-year-old, but he's been sleeping with me since his because the, the the youngest is my husband's and mine, mm -hmm. and he's been sleeping with me since his daddy had a stroke. Okay. Because he's scared, and um, I offered to let Timothy move in there because, but he he wanted to stay in his bed. Oh my God. Oh, I should have made a beat. I should have done something. Can they really hide that from you like that? They can hide a lot of things from oh you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's your date of birth, ma'am? Uh, 313 and 79. <laughs> what's your phone number? Um, I'm sorry. Here, here you go. <laughs> okay. You can call, you can make some calls if you want I've again. Tried. I'll try. I'll try again in a minute. I'm sorry. I, just, I don't know what no, to do. No, I, I, nothing I can say could help you through this, you know. It's, I, I, the best thing is to do is, is just bring your loved ones in and just. And his baby brother doesn't know what's going on. And he, I have to tell him eventually, but I don't want to yet. Oh, my gosh. Well, we have to investigate every, every death. Um, so I can't let anybody go in the basement for now. Okay. Um, a medical examiner is going to be coming here in a little bit. I'm sorry it's a little cluttered down there, but... You're fine. I'm sure y'all have seen a lot worse. Okay. Um, you're probably going to get asked the same questions multiple times, so I'm, so I'm sorry for that. Oh, it's fine. I just, like I said, I feel like I just mm -hmm. missed something. So if you want to... How did he hide that from me? Um, How could he do that? Oh. I work. I work in White Cloud. Mm -hmm. So well, that's a I, I that's a long job. way. I'm, a, I'm law clerk to the circuit court judge up there. Mm. I love my job, but yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. How did this happen? Pardon? Where does he sleep? Where Down there, sleep? right there in that room. The bed? Yeah. You see the pillow and the blanket and stuff? He sleeps on the top bunk? Yeah, it's a loft. There's no on a bunk. There's okay. stuff underneath it. Oh, it's like a desk on the underneath? Yeah, well, yeah, the desk got broken, but there's boxes underneath it. So you heard him fall. Yeah. That woke you up? Yeah. And you went down there and he was... And I helped him up. Um... I asked him if he wanted something to eat because he, again, it, he, he, the first time I noticed anything on even his face was last night. And he said, no, I'm not hungry. I said, did you, did you hit your head? And I checked his head to make sure he didn't have anything. I noticed he has some scratches on his face. I'm like, are you okay? No, I'm fine. And then I watched him get back up on his bed. And then I went back upstairs. And then I woke up and I went to check on him this morning when I was getting ready for work. So I went down there and and I said something. I didn't know he could wake up and I shook him and didn't respond. Was he on the bed when you came down there? Yes. <laughs> and then you pulled him down and started CPR? Yes. Okay. I called 911. And I was, my 20 year old was getting up because I was going to drop him off at work early. Because. His e-bike has a flat tire. Oh my gosh. Uh, I should have noticed this. I should have seen this. Oh my gosh. All right. 
We got, we have, um, people coming to talk to you called victim services. <laughs> They'll help you through Thank you. the grieving process because. Please. I, just, I feel, I, he's, he's really good at hiding stuff. Mm. He's, that's part of the reason his dad couldn't handle him is because he kept lying about stuff. Mm. How old is he? Fifteen. Fifteen? He'll be sixteen in August. But his dad texted me last May and said, I can't handle him anymore. I have to send him to live with you. And I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. Why, why was that? Why was, what, did he, what did he do that? He, said he was lying to him. He was um, destroying things. Um, is, he, is he hard to deal with? I don't think so, but I'm stricter than his dad. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that, I mean, he, he, he's, the lying's been a problem. Um, but nothing oh, major. Yeah, nothing crazy. No. Um, he's, All teenagers he's, lie tripped down the stairs a couple of times, like just half the flight. And then later he came back to me, admitted he did it intentionally. But I've asked him, I'm like, you're trying to hurt yourself? He's like, no, I just wanted to see what would happen. It's, that's the way he, a lot of times, he, he wants to see what would happen if he does stuff. And, oh my gosh. And I guess he, he was take, he, he's prescribed ADHD medicine, but he's yeah. not taking it. Yeah, because it was, he wasn't able to sleep with it. And he was doing really well, and he asked me if he could not take it, and I said, okay. And it was killing his appetite, that doesn't help. That was, he started, he quit taking it about the time of the first hunger strike, because um, when he finally started eating and he was, he was. But he did eat last night, you said? Yes. He had some toast with butter on it, is what he had. That's all he wanted to eat. He said his stomach was a little upset, and he didn't want to eat anything else. The police located Shanda's other son. Discussion ensued regarding Timothy's passing. A comprehensive investigation highlighted concerns surrounding the death, prompting authorities to delve deeper. Because he's, he's skin and bone. I know, and I just, how did he He's, he's really... Well, he, he, he doesn't communicate with him hardly at all. Like, they say hi and they don't, yeah, he's... Are you guys full brothers or half brothers? Well, they're full. The only half is the one that's in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, might as well get your name while I'm here. You're probably going to be asked this a thousand times, but uh, what's your first name, son? Paul. P A U L. What's your middle name? Byron. B Y R O Z. And last name? Nobody's answering the phone here. What's your date of birth? 04, or 10th of April, 2002. You have your own phone number? Um, I recently got a new phone, so I'm going to look at my new number. Hold on, I'll find it for you. And when, when was the last time you talked to Tim? Uh, yesterday morning when I was getting him up. No, yesterday afternoon before you left for work. Before I picked you up and took you to work because you were e-bike time. Uh, you were, you yeah. talked to him then. Uh, I got off of work at one right. this morning. Has, has he talked to you recently about his problems at all or what's, what he's dealing with? No, he, he never has said any of this word to me. Mm. He never really talked at all. Did you guys have normal conversations? I think the last time we did was before all of this happened. After that, they, he just they, kind of they shut literally, because he works a lot and they mm -hmm. didn't talk. Yeah. And sometimes brothers will tell each other what they're not willing to tell their parents. Why you went on hunger strike? I mean, I'm assuming it's even. There's a recording device so that you're aware. I know there's some cameras in here, but the sound is kind of messed up. Gotcha. So, I'm going to turn that on to you just in case it helps. Yeah. <clears throat> you came down here with uh, Officer Seven, is that something? Yes. How did that kind of all transpire? I don't know how you ended up here. I was, from my, 
know that my mother had come, I think, down here okay. or something. I think it was in the court or I don't exactly know the full details. Okay. But um, she left my stepfather's phone with me. I don't have any access to anything. The only thing that I would be able to do is if the person she's with, I think his name is Stephen or Stanley. Frank Stanley. Stanley. Yes. Thank you. Uh, if he could, he would contact, I would be able to pick that up, but okay, nothing else. Were you supposed to work today, or no? <laughs> so you didn't have work today. No, I have to. You know, a couple of mm -hmm. off. Okay, when you go back Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, okay. I think it's a morning shift. Are you working two different jobs? Did you say you were working two? No, different jobs? I used to work two different oh, jobs. Okay. I heard you say that in Oklahoma. Oh, okay, because I think your brother was like. I want to work two jobs, and they're like, mm-mm, mm -mm. no, no, you don't. No. <laughs> Four hours of sleep maximum was a nightmare. That's a joke. That's not even funny, actually. Huh. Um, yeah, four hours doesn't sound like a lot to, to get anything done. What kind of jobs are you doing then? Fast food. Okay. And I had one before, and then after I graduated from an alternative school right. early, um, I started a second one. That was uh, by my biological father's demands, basically. Okay. Um, um, have you talked to him at all recently, biological father? Does he know um, what's going on? Or? I don't think quite yet. The last time we talked to him was last week. Okay. He, uh, he and my stepmother are, got a divorce. So they called and let us know about all that. What, uh, what is your relationship like with him? I mean, do you try to do associate with him at all or not really? Not really. I have found out that a lot of what he's told me about my biological mother up here was nothing more than blatant lies. Okay. He said that she didn't care for me, that yeah. she never wanted to see me, which were both lies. It was just, he's a control freak. Okay. So, and okay. he's very manipulative. Okay. My stepmother's names were never even on any anything for like paying bills or for school stuff. It was all him. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he was very much yes. in control of everything. Yes. So. And, uh, I know that that night Timothy did eat because we had pizza. He had three slices. Oh, oh, I want to stop it for just a second. Yes. Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Um, I don't want to talk anything specific about the case just yet. Uh, since you, since the police showed up at your house and yeah. they brought you down here, I want to advise yeah. you some rights before we talk about that sort of thing. What yeah. I do want you to know, though, is that we went through the phones, okay? Okay. And we're beginning to go through the phones, and there's a lot of evidence in the phones, and I know that you're kind of aware of communication between yourself and your mother. Yes. And those sort of things, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. Yeah. But, um, I mean, certainly those are very serious things that you guys would talk about. Yeah. And, it, I mean, from what I saw, it sounds like you're compassionate and that yes. you cared about him and you sent some pictures that were like, he's looking too skinny and we, we need to feed him. And, you know, so sometimes you get frustrated, but at the end of yeah. the day, you kept coming back to, like, to caring. Um, yeah. But the end result of that, he passed away, right? And he passed away from not eating food. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I want you to be aware of this stuff, okay? So these are your Miranda rights, right? So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk to an attorney and the right to his presence before or during any questioning. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, one will be appointed to a public expense to represent you before any questioning. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, when we talk about, I just jump right into it. Yeah. I know that we talked yesterday. And yeah. I know that not everything that we talked about was the truth yesterday. That's okay. Yeah. You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel guilty about not telling the truth to me. Okay? I want you to just focus on yourself right now and think about what's best for you. Yeah. And, and let, try to get to the truth of what really happened with your brother because he deserves yeah. that. Um, yeah. I mean, there's clearly a lot of messages about stuff that you guys are doing with him, about what he's eating, about restricting his food. How did that, how did that all work? Like, what was he allowed to eat? We stopped the food restrictions recently because we had noticed the thin. 
We wanted to get that back on. We didn't want any of this. We never wanted him to be injured or hurt. I loved him so much. Yeah, I can tell that. I can certainly tell that. When you say we, you're talking about your mother. And yes, she uh, she loved him. We wanted what's best. Yeah. The thing is, he was stuck in the past. Okay. What, uh, so you stopped the food restriction. When did that kind of happen? Like ballpark that for me? Two weeks, approximately. We, we were hoping that we could get enough where he would be safe and then we could continue to add it back to where we wouldn't have to worry and we could... What were the, what were the restrictions? We made sure that it was still something that gave him enough calories and everything. We, it was rice or bread and like I said last week, he got pizza. Okay. What were the, what were they in place for, like in the first place? Sneaking food over and over and over. Okay. We, we've tried everything. We were nice. We tried different consequences, but he just, okay. he never listened. What were some of the other types of consequences? Like, um, Like prior to, prior to, like, are we talking like... We did take away his devices. Okay. Because that was also because he wouldn't stay on his school sites and would just go and try and play games or watch YouTube. Okay. But he was, the thing is, he should have been held back so much. Yeah. But he passed all of his final exams. So... I don't think it was my stepmother. My stepmother was amazing. Yeah. But I believe it was my father's doing. Okay. Helping him pass exams. Was it all online school? No. For back in Oklahoma, he went to public. The thing is, okay. he never really did any of the other work. But when it came to final exams, he had everything he needed to know. So they let him move to the next grade, which was just... Right. So, you guys lived together back in Oklahoma? Yeah. What was life like back there? Hectic. Okay. My, uh, my step, my step nieces, my stepmother's grandchildren lived with us. Okay. Because of stuff that was going on between their mother and their father. My st stepmother had custody. Yeah. And we had, uh, at that point, we were living in a four bedroom with eight people in the house. Jeez. Yeah. And. Did you share one thing then? Yes, okay. and it absolutely smelled, because even then, he, even when he, the bathroom was really just a couple feet away, he wouldn't get up and go. Okay. And what is that? You kind of told me about it yesterday, but you said there was some sort of problem that he had that caused that, or? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't I don't about it. honestly know. I just, I, that's what I've assumed. Okay. Because it's, I'm pretty sure it's been basically his whole life since this has been happening. And it's not just that, he's urinated in places back in Oklahoma, in his closet, the dressers, yeah. everything. Okay. He's, uh, what type of, like, disorders does he have that you're aware of? I know he has ADHD. I believe he has sensory processing. Okay. Um, I was never there for any sort of autism spectrum test, but... From what I've seen, I know that that probably was a thing. I also know he was motor and speech impaired. He okay. couldn't run right and talk right. I think when he was younger, he had to have a surgery on his ears to have tubes put in because he has heightened hearing that was very loud noises could be painful. Oh, okay. So too much. Yeah. The fact is that he could hear my mother, my stepmother talking with a friend about going to a movie with the TV when it was on really high volume. Oh, because okay. one of those sort of pointers. What about you? Do you have any of those sort of things or anything? Uh... I have ADHD. Okay. And I think they said I was diagnosed with sensory processing, but from what my mother has told me, that that's, that's just no. What is that? I, I'm not scared. Uh, What's sensory processing? It's... Basically, when you overreact to things way too much, yeah. I guess loud noises and things are, okay. and bright lights are disturbing. For me, that's there's not really any of that. The only problems I have is when someone's music has a lot of bass drumming in it. Okay. For me, that'll feel like someone's smashing my ribs with an mallet. Oh, okay. That's why I don't hardly listen to music very high if it's got. Uh, Bass drums because it hurts. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, did you go to school? 
Yes, I went to the school back in Oklahoma. I graduated from Santa Fe High School. Okay. I just, I've even got the diploma and I stand in my room. Okay. You graduated from high school. What did you kind of do after that? Just... Um, I think, I know that my father had kicked me out after, like in, I think, May two years ago or so. So like 20, May of 20? So that's 20. Yeah, and due to COVID, the graduation had been postponed to July. And I had been managed, I had managed to get my bio mom's number at that point and was capable of talking to her and telling her how all of this had happened. Yeah. And I also asked some of the things that, about that, what dad had told me the whole, did he, did you really not care? Right. And from what he told, and I'm pretty sure it's scientifically impossible that she had her tubes undone for, for Gabriel, which from what I'm guessing, that's an impossibility, isn't it? Oh, okay. So I, he's, he's, I a miracle, that, he's a little miracle child. Fair enough. He's a blessing to this world. Yeah. Is your mom feeling like that? Certainly. That he's a blessing. Of course. Yeah. She loves him so much. Yeah. She loved every single one of us, but my dad's controlish, freaky nature was just... He didn't want her having any contact and screwing all of his control up. And there was a thing back in Oklahoma where I had to, I had problems with emotional release. I, I was so terrified of him that I didn't ever want to have released any of the negative emotions I ever had around him. It was, there were times where I wanted to say no, but I was so terrified that I just couldn't. Yeah. Here, I can release my anger. And I do it in the right ways. I never do it any in any way that I'm not supposed to. Okay. And if I unintentionally cop an attitude with my mother, I I realize it and I apologize, telling her that I did not mean to, that I just slipped a small amount and I'm going to go and do something to calm down. Would there be any sort of consequence for your mom if you slipped up with her attitude wise or how that work? Um, there were times when I would cop an attitude that was unnecessary and she would have me get off devices for maybe 15 minutes because usually that was what it was revolved around because yeah. I'll be honest, I have, a, I have an addiction to my devices. Okay. And it's, it's not something I can really do without, I guess. I don't know. I, I never had very much of that back in Oklahoma. Yeah. My dad was strict. He didn't even give me a phone. My si my sister and my stepsister had phones before I did. And that was due to the fact that he could not raise a male. Right. And at first he thought not that the ADHD was just ADD. Because like my mother, I could hyperfocus, which is actually a symptom of ADHD. Right. And then so now you're in work. I know we yeah. talked yesterday about how you're paying bills and yep. and unlike and yeah, yeah, and unlike my step, my father, she doesn't take, force me to give her half of my paycheck. He forced that on me, yeah. and I was working basically minimum wage so, at both. Yeah, that's tough. It was nightmarish, and the thing is that my stepmother didn't even know about that until after I had moved and I had told her, okay. and she apologized so heavily because she. She was just gonna want some stuff to help with rent at times. Yeah. Makes sense. And when he asked to borrow money, he never paid it back. And my mother has paid it back every time. Whether it's in a way like paying for the bike payments for my electronic bike, because you know we put a down payment and then we have to do the consecutive payments for yeah. it. Was that your first, would you consider that like your first big purchase on your own? Your electric bike or any purchase on uh, more expensive thing? More expensive than that? I don't believe so. No. What about PCs? How much do you spend a decent amount of money on computers? Or are you uh, trying to just piece them together? Or? We spend good amounts because Minecraft is something I, I've always loved. Yeah. And because for me, for the ADHD, being able to build and be creative is just something that I absolutely adored. Okay. And I also, it also was something that I 
liked doing for YouTube. I have a YouTube channel myself. It's not popular or anything, but okay. it is very... It's something that I was inspired by from yeah. the Preston plays in the recently passed Technoblade. Yeah. Okay. So, you come here with mom about two years ago. Yeah. And Timothy comes about a year ago. You said, I think you said yesterday, the same day even, right? Yeah, the same right day because I, was, day. I left the house. I, I, I was, I moved here into Michigan, I think, on the 30th. Okay. Because for the time after I had moved out of my parents' house, I stayed with my uncle Dave and Aunt Linda. Okay. Who both had actually been tricked by my father to also believe that my mother was bad until she managed to clear the air. Yeah. So you say the same date, but a year later, does that sound right? Yeah, I moved okay. here at a later date, but I moved, we, he, was, he moved up here on the day I was kicked out, basically kicked oh, okay. out. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. My dad had basically put a timeline, like I had to move out by a certain date and have my own house and be on my own two feet, which... The thing is, he never prepared me for any of this. He just, in any of that, he just, right. like I said, he was, I love him, but most of the respect I had for him is gone. I just. So Timothy comes up here. What's life like immediately when he gets up here? It was good change. at first. The thing is, it, this has happened before. Not like moving up from somewhere, but. For the whole thing where, I think he said, back in Oklahoma, I think once or twice, he had said something about being Okay. And we had put him in, in my mother, my stepmother and father agreed on this, that he should have, he could be institutionalized. Okay. And when he got back, the first couple of weeks were good. He didn't misbehave, but then after that, it just, reverted back to what he was doing before. Okay. The destructiveness and everything. What a, let's explain that. Like the destructiveness. He, it was very dangerous. He would pull the outlet covers off. He would screw with the light fixtures. It was, okay. our house in Edmund was his room. It was, he'd pull the studs out of the wall, rip off the painting, the paint, and he, okay. it was, yeah. Were you able to have a conversation with him like you and I are having like a back and forth conversation or he wasn't able to talk like that? Uh, he could talk, but the thing is that it would mostly be hard to understand. Okay. Because of the speech imperation, I think so. I don't know what that word uh, is. Speech impediment? Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. but, uh, he was in therapy for that and the motor. When he, up here? No, he in here? Oklahoma. Do you know if he was in any therapy or anything up here? Um, no. Okay. Do you know if you ever went to the doctor at all? Here? Um, I don't know, honestly, we never, until, I don't know, we, we managed, since we stopped the last hunger strike and managed to get him back to a safe weight, we were, we were hoping and praying that he wouldn't need any sort of assistance at that point, which he didn't, he was, he was fine, but then this whole ordeal happened and... Right. I honestly feel like we should have taken him to the doctor sooner. We sh we could have done something, but we he, with all this that has happened, it's just yeah. When I mean, how long ago do you think you probably should have taken him to the doctor? Honestly, if I'm going to be honest, I'd say the day after the divorce. Final, and we got the message about the divorce. And the thing is that my mother can't even face my father right now. We, she doesn't want to call him because the one thing that she and I both know is that he's going to hurl every ounce of blame that he can at her. Right. So what? Uh, the, the, when was the, When was that divorce? Like I, know, I think it was exactly a week ago today or tomorrow. Something like that. So we, oh, about a week ago. He's not yes. a. Yeah, we, uh, we, they, I saw, uh, I saw on your phone that you had sent a, a couple of pictures to your mom. Yes. Pretty skinny, and you said, you know, hey, he's nothing but skin. Yeah, I, I was, I was so very concerned. It just, yeah. I, yeah, what, do you think that maybe would have been a good time to take him to the doctor, or? 
Yeah, honestly, that probably would have been one too. I just, yeah. I don't know. And then you sent a picture of like his legs that were just basically gone, right? Instead yeah. Of, no wonder he can't stand or something along the lines. Yeah, right? but the thing is, before yesterday, and I think the day before, he could walk. Yeah. He might need a little support every so often, like he put his hand against the wall or grabbed the rail of the stairs. But after a couple of seconds, he'd let go and be fine. Okay. It was never anything major. Yeah. When was like the last time he was really like talking to you, like able to have a conversation or at least try to have a conversation? Um, last time he actually talked was three days ago, but the day before, or the day after that, the day before yesterday, he could talk, a, he talked a small amount in the morning, but then he just sort of was making groans and moans and it concerned me. I was, as my mother was driving me to work, I, I recommended that maybe we should take him to the hospital. Okay. I'm not sure if that ever happened or not. I, what did I she, what did she say about that when you, when you made that recommendation? I, I don't know. I think after that. I think that was like, as I was getting out of the car and shutting the door. Yeah. So we're talking, so today's the 7th, yesterday the 6th. What day are we talking about? Like the last thing was really kind of talking outside of the morning. Growing. The 5th. The he, he talked some in the morning. He was okay. responsive. Yeah. That much I know. What's the deal with the photograph in the bathtub of his face? Like zoomed in on his face. Uh, he, he, he had been taking a bath. Okay. And... I went in there to check on him at one point, and he's just kind of laying there. I'm like, bud, you okay? He didn't respond, but he was looking around, so... And he was breathing, I know that much. Yeah. So... Okay. So, at that time... But he wasn't talking at that time? No, and it, it did... It's, it started to concern me. I te I'm not sure if I texted Mama about it or not. Well, you sent a picture to her. Yeah, I probably should have said something about the ER at that point, though. Well, I certainly is so stupid. You have to think about it like this, right? She's she's a grown adult, and if she she sees that, that's not all on you, right? You you made from what I see, you made numerous attempts to say we need to do something different about this. Yeah, we need to, we can't keep doing this thing. I know she's a good person, but yeah. just and it's not a dog. I don't think I don't know if this is both of our faults. If we should have done something sooner, I know we both could have. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to think about this. Right now is not a time about blaming people, but it's a time to try to figure out, you know, when when could we have changed things? What could we have done differently? How did we get to the point where we were at? Because, you know, clearly where you guys got to, when you say you was in the bath, that wasn't a nice, enjoyable bath, though, right? That was a punishment bath, right? That's a cold, ice-cold bath. And, and that doesn't... That's hard to understand. I did wash. That's and he did. He. I did tell him that if he wanted to wash up, and he did. But then, in the middle of it, I think he, he the whole laying there in a daze happened. When he's getting these ice baths, I know there's numerous of them, right? I mean, because I've read through the messages. Yeah. How, how are you getting the ice? Like, where's it coming from? Well, we have an ice machine upstairs. It's not a lot. It okay. can barely create any. It's enough to make it a full on. Okay. But it's a cold bath. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're putting ice in there? Like, one, one dump of ice, two dump One dump, dump. yeah, it's just maybe that much. And, and then you're just running cold water, or what type of water? Uh, water? It, the water doesn't exactly go cold, cold. Okay. It says there's a cold button, but right. it's basically sort of lukewarm-ish. How many times would you ask me that you guys gave cold baths as a punishment for um, not behaving or whatever, whatever, for whatever reason? I think for punishments, it was, I don't exactly know the number, but it wasn't a lot. Are we talking like 5, 10, 20, every day, every other day, like mm -hmm. any idea? 5, yeah. but whose idea was it to give him a cold bath as a punishment? It was my mother's. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if it would do, if it would be a punishment effective or not. I don't do you remember the first time you guys did it? Like what why? Like what no, did you do? Not exactly. What did you do on that day that you sent the photo that made you have to give him a cold bath? Um I 
think it was that he not only peed, but also pooped. And by the end, my mother wasn't too happy because it absolutely reeked. Yeah. I mean, we talk about bed. I understand we've been to the house and we've been through all the messages. Yeah. They, where did you sleep most of the nights in that closet? Yes. When did that kind of start happening? Um, or had he always been staying in there? No, he didn't always. Okay. But the thing was, the loft bed, if you've noticed, yeah. the screws and stuff, that was his doing. Okay. And we couldn't get it safely back. Authorities summoned Shonda for interrogation where she attempted to divert attention by emphasizing her illness. However, this did not deter the police from proceeding with the next steps in the investigation. Oh, okay. So that's what that was about. So please, take care of yourself. He's a respectful officer. He's assuring you he's going to do a medical screening. I know you got medical problems. You have to take good care of yourself. This is a manageable problem. The law says you're presumed innocent, and you know that. Okay? So don't assume the worst, assume the best. Okay? Then take care of yourself. I'll be back in touch with you as soon as I can. Okay? I do have to go. I'm heading out of state right now, but I'm back tomorrow. Okay. And as soon as I get more concrete information, I'll come see you. Okay? Thank you. Good. Please take care of yourself. Got any property you want me to take possession of? Because you can't oh. keep it in here. Um, I've got my ID. I mean, I don't... You should keep that. Yeah, we should bring that oh, with you. House keys. Paul doesn't know where another set is. Pardon? He doesn't know where another set of keys is. Okay. Should I give them? You want me to give them to Paul? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, if I take this. Let's just... Yeah, I can do that. I'll take him. I'm oh, sure it's okay with no, you. that's fine. Okay. No, I don't think I have anything. No, I didn't bring anything. I was just cold. Try to be okay. Try. Okay. The officer's going to take you back. Okay. I'll make it bigger. I'll tell you everything that's going on. Or what I've been instructed to do. Thank All right, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Um, you're going to be charged with uh, child abuse right now. Um, I believe it's the first or second degree. So it, it is a felony. So you, you won't be able to get out of jail until you see the judge, until all the warrant paperwork's down there, okay? Which will probably be tomorrow. All right. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm, I'm the bearer of bad news right now. Thank you. you know? Yeah, it's been a bad couple of days. Six months. Mm. Six months. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Nope, you're all right. Um, I do have to handcuff you, but I'll do it in the front. Okay. Um, but my blood sugar crashes. I need that. Are you, are you diabetic? I'm reactive hypoglycemic. Okay. You take medication for that? No. I have a sore stomach normally, but I didn't bring it. Yeah. For good reason. All right. I can let you have that all the way up until the jail. But the jail won't let you bring in any kind of food or nothing. So if you want to drink it, you can always drink it now. Just worry don't keep it messed up. All right. I haven't been able to keep anything down. No. The last couple of days. I don't want you puking then if you're going to try to drink it. I can try. We'll see. I don't know. All right. So I got my hand cast on you. I'm going to do it in the front because I don't. you're not going to give me any problems. But we're going to have to go down there. Strange. Pardon? I don't have the strength to do anything. Right. I wouldn't anyway. Did y'all lose an officer? But I have to cover you down. Did y'all lose somebody? Yes, a Detroit so officer was killed yesterday. I'm so sorry. Yep. Um, come this way. I need to. I want to see if there's a girl here to check your your pockets. All right, let's come over and sit down. Relax for a second, because you're, I'm, like I said, I'm the bearer of bad news, I know. Just have a seat for a second, relax. Shanda Vander Ark was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Vander Ark was also sentenced to 50 to 100 years in prison for first degree child abuse, with credit for 575 days served. For more videos about criminals, hit the subscribe button.